and my friend gave me the ID to go check out the newest Fast and Furious movie, Fast X. I wasn't very keen on this ID, but eventually I agreed. So I went to watch this movie and even better, the movie was in 3D, something I hate. But ah well, I was already there so no point in turning back now. By the way, I went to this movie with zero expectations because I have a not so very nice opinion about Fast and the Furious franchise I was expecting MCU level craziness and I exactly got what I was expecting. So why am I here ready to complain about the movie when I got what I wanted or at least expected? And that's a good question and the answer to that question is because the franchise was something I absolutely loved back in the days. But now I just think of this franchise as the Avengers Light as you might say. Which is really unfortunate because there was no franchise like this when it first started with the cars and the street racing and all of that stuff. Okay, okay, let's get into the video. But before that, I just want to ask you guys one thing. And that one thing is, if you guys enjoy the video, please give it a like. Because for you, it's just one second. But for me, it helps me out a lot. And if you don't enjoy, don't like it. That shows me that I have to improve my content, but if you do enjoy it, and if you, if you want to keep watching my content, there's always a subscribe button too. Okay, thank you so much. Alright, alright, Fast X. Where to start with this one? Because in this movie there was so much stuff, and weirdly enough, there was barely anything at the same time. I know, that's a pretty weird statement, but that's what I thought when I was coming out of the theater. So that's why maybe the plot is a good starting point for this video. I just want to say we're going full spoilers in this because I can't describe my thoughts properly without spoiling. So this is a warning if you haven't seen Fast X, uh, you haven't missed much but still, if you don't want to get spoiled, here's your chance to end the video, thank you for watching. So yeah, the plot for this movie is what you kinda expect from the trailers and actually is what you expect from Fast and Furious nowadays. It's something that happened in a previous movie and is coming to haunt Dom and his family. We've seen this with Jason Statham's character being the brother of a previous villain. We've seen this with Dom having a kid with that random police chick. And now we see this with the newest villain, Dante. Now, because I just said that we're going full spoilers, I assume that you have seen the movie. That's why I won't do a full story recap. Okay, so Dante. Another villain in this overloaded franchise is the son of Herman Reyes, sorry if I butchered that name, but he's the villain of Fast Five. And if you remember that's the one where they were cruising around in Rio with the vault hanging onto their car. Yeah, there's some weird stuff in this franchise. Okay, so his son is coming back for revenge. He's played by Jason Momoa, that's the guy that plays Aquaman, and he gives a very... How how do I put this? Uh, yeah, it's a very special portrayal of Dante. Because this character is basically the Joker light, something like that. And I actually mean that. I don't know if the character was written this way or if Momoa plays it this way. But he just looks like a wannabe Joker. The way he acts in the movie, for example, he kills someone and licks the blood of a knife. Uh, he laughs when he gets beat up. Uh, he he thinks it's funny when people get hurt, so stuff like that. It's very hard to describe what I mean with examples, but if you've seen the movie, I'm 100% sure you know what I mean. Now, let me make this clear. He's not a bad villain, because he's actually pretty entertaining, but the character of Dante shows, or at least to me it shows, what happened with the Fast and Furious franchise. Now that we have Joker-esque characters in here, because... <laughs> Because this franchise just started off as a franchise about cars and racing and now we're dealing with world ending scenarios and cars going into space. So yeah, some pretty pretty weird progress. Now there of course are other characters in this movie other than Mr. Dante over here. The most important character is of course Dominic Toretto and he acts the same way he does in every Fast and Furious movie. He's all about family. No man in all seriousness, that's basically everything his character does in this movie. This guy has been the same character for I don't even know how many movies now, so I honestly don't know what to say about him. The acting from Vin Diesel is solid, 
just acts the way he does in every movie. He's an okay character that I've just grown tired of seeing, but I'm just tired of seeing these movies in general. So yeah, that's that. You also have other characters in here, like Han, that barely does anything. Tej, you have Tej and I even forgot the other guy's name. I think Roman, yeah, Roman, that's right. You have Letty, that she's I think one of the better characters in this franchise. You have Jason Stadium's character, who's always a nice character to see, but that's what you expect because it's Jason Stadium. And then there are some other characters that I actually forgot their name of, because they really don't have any purpose in this movie other than fill up the runtime. But for now, I haven't talked about my favorite character in this movie. And it's not Brie Larson's character, who by the way, I'm not a big fan of Brie Larson, but she had a good performance and her character was very decent. But no, no, no. My favorite character in this movie is Jacob Toretto, and he is played by, of course, the one and only John Cena. But I just love John Cena as an actor. He's just very funny in every role he plays. First role I saw him in was Peacemaker in the Suicide Squad movie, not the show because I haven't seen it, but I absolutely loved him as Peacemaker, and I love him here. His character itself is nothing special, he's just rescuing his nephew, but for some reason is the way Cena acts, it makes it so much more fun. I don't know, maybe I'm just a John Cena fanboy, but I love his acting, and that's why his death is all the more painful. Not because I was emotionally attached to this character or something, because to be honest I have more emotional attachment to the shit I just flushed down the toilet than every, any character in this franchise but because his character was fun and now I'm gonna have to sit through another 30 Fast and Furious sequels without John Cena and that's a bummer. For the story itself, like I said, I won't recap it but it's really not an outstanding. It's pretty decent but again it's so over the top. It was fun however to see some street racing in here again. They're finally going back to some of their own roots but for the rest it's just Dante trying to mess with Dom. There's one thing here that annoyed me so damn much but really <laughs> it really really annoyed me and it was the plot twist at the very end because it had zero build up it's just there to move on the plot and because the good guys could have won and if they did that they couldn't make a part two for this movie and, um, I just hate bad plot twists that don't have any build up. It can ruin good movies and here we can see it can also ruin a mid ass movie. Now if I had to give a rating it'd be a 6.5 out of 10 but if I don't look at what this franchise used to represent it'd probably be a 7.5. So this rating is kind of biased just because I miss the old Fast and Furious movies. And one thing I do want to say before we end the video is that if you've been enjoying the new Fast movies, you'll love this one for sure. But I haven't been enjoying them and I've grown tired of the franchise, but for some reason I just keep watching them and keep being disappointed with what I see. And I just hope that the next one will actually be the last one, like they said, or I think that's what they said at least. But I'm the same guy that thought that the seventh movie was going to be the last one. And here we are. Alright, that was all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and... Oh no. Wait. There's one thing I forgot to mention. The Rock isn't in this one. So actually never mind. 10 out of 10. Best movie in the franchise. True The Rock. Fast and Furious is the best thing that ever been made. And has ever been shown on the big screen. Everyone should go see it right, right now. Nah, I'm kidding. He had a post credit scene. We're never getting rid of this guy. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video and stay safe out there.